Hello and welcome back to Microbiome Live. We are glad that you took the time to join us. So today we're going to be learning, uh, hearing from Ludwig, uh, Microbiome Tech from Australia, and he's going to be giving us a tour of the scrap management solutions available in Toolbox. So let's get right into it. How's it going today, Ludwig? Oh, it's going very well. It's a beautiful morning over here in Melbourne. Awesome. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon and good evening, everyone. Yep, I'm Ludwig from Australia, and today I'm going to be talking about scrap management. Uh, very handy, very useful tool in regards to obviously managing your offcuts, um, in regards to storage and how they actually come off the nested sheets. So I've got over here just a simple nested, um, nested two nested sheets. So as you can see, nothing too special. Um, there are a few open areas in here that obviously we can use for scrap. Um, now, in the past, what you may have had to done was, you know, throw in an extra polyline here or there to sort of get microvellum to automatically cut that for you um, and then go to your library spec groups to sort of add that sheet in. But with scrap management, it becomes a bit easier, a lot more automated uh, in that process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my processing station and quickly show you where all that information pretty much is. So. In scrap management, you'll have a little nice tab inside your processing station where pretty much all the information in regards to actually implementing your scrap management is. So the first thing we've got is this little checkbox over here called save scrap. So this guy here is actually going to save your scrap um, after it's cut off on the machine. You've got a couple of parameters, so minimum area and minimum dimension. And these are pretty much the prerequisites of what can be classified as scrap. So what's the smallest size panel to be considered scrap? And obviously you don't want to have a 300 by 200 panel and have Mark Bomb go, yep, that's a, that's a sheet we can use to fit apart. You generally want to have them nice and nice and big. So to show you how it works, might as well just hit tick, okay. And I'm just gonna rename my batch so I know where everything is and reprocess it. All right, so when you do process it, you can obviously manage which scrap is going to be set to what inventory. So where is your scrap going to be stored? So you can see here, we've got a couple of sheets that Mark Bum goes, yep, these guys are nice and big. You could probably use these to cut other parts off of it. Now on the top here, you can say where you want to store it. So I've already got preset rack bay one, storeroom one, storeroom two. Now these can be customized to wherever you store uh, your offcuts in your factory. Um, so I was going to say storeroom one, for example, I'm going to put my color board there and I'm going to put my white melamine over in storeroom two. All right, and save the inventory. So that means that next time I process a job and I'm going to be using white melamine or color board, it's going to say, yep, you've got these guys saved in your library. Um, you might as well use them. So close out of that. And I'm going to get to my nested sheets. Scrap. And now you can see the bit of a difference between the normal batch and my scrap batches. Now I've got this big guy pretty much cut out out of here and out of here. So already in within a couple of clicks of the button, it's already done two things that you normally have to go to two separate places to do. You first got a nice little machine route to actually cut out the part. Um, and it's also automatically stored inside your library. So we're going to our library spec group now. Love it, man. Here we have a look at that white model line 16. You can now see that that's actually added inside your library as well, automatically. And once we process it again, um, it would automatically, you, well, it would, you can have it set to automatically um, use that offcut. At the moment, I have it prompted to tell me whether it wants to use it or not. Um, and that prompt is, again, stored inside your processing station. So I'll go back in here. Oop, wrong one. And I'm just going to scroll down to this guy here, use scrap from inventory. Oop, sorry, before I go any further. Um, You've got these length or, or length and width uh, prompts here. So at the moment, it's pretty much saying if a part falls within this area, which 
at the moment it's kind of a 700 by 700 minimum area or if you've got a length of 800 you'll consider it scrap now if you switch that to end what they'll do is that you need to have a minimum length of at least 800 and a minimum area of of um <clears throat> excuse me of uh 500,000. so if, i'll show you a bit of a difference if i so we'll put that there process them again uh, I'm gonna go, yep, sure, why not? Now you don't have to commit these to your storage locations. Say for example, you don't wanna store this inside your storage. You don't have to have that automatically put in the storeroom. Um, this is why I do have that prompt to pop up to sort of notify me, you can have this stored. So I'm just gonna go into my scrap here. And now you can see the biggest difference is that between when I had it set to all and I have set to end is because there's this guy here. I just to mention that. Oopsie. That is not 800. It doesn't meet the prerequisites. It needs to be a minimum of 800 and have an area of 500,000. So, what you can also do is you can also say, well, I, well, I want to only have set sheet sizes. I want to have it pretty much a prerequisite fit list of what the biggest and what the smallest is. So I already have one added in here. So what's that's pretty much saying is that I want to have the big, I want to have sheets where the smallest it can be is 500 and the biggest it can be is one meter. So I'll give you a good example of um, what that looks like. And I'm going to say no this time. my drawing, go to my set. And I can see that this guy here is, well, only one meter by one meter. That's as big as I want it to be. Well, this guy here, it's gonna be 700 by one meter because it, again, it's bigger than 500 um, in width and length and it's smaller than one meter. So, that's just a few options that you have that you can sort of set how you want your sheets, your scrap sheets to come off your nest uh, when you process. Now that prompt, if you want to turn it on and off, you find it a bit annoying, you can always untick it to prompt you during processing and it'll automatically um, commit your uh, scrap sizes to, to your storage locations. Now I actually want to use my scrap. And I saved it in the storage room for a reason because I want to use it for future use. And that's why I'm going to tick on use scrap from inventory. Again, I've got a little tick box here that can sort of tell me, well, it will automatically consume scrap that I have saved, but I'm going to have it unticked because I do want it to prompt me to say, yep, yeah, I do want to use this scrap, uh, this scrap sheet for my next nest. And you also got trim cuts as well. So I generally have these set to about five mil on my sheets. And I'm going to have this guy. Uh, actually wipe that back there and now you don't have to rename these to scrap you scrap set and what have you I'm just doing this just to make it a bit easier for me to know what nested sheets I want to look at to sort of show you what's going on and it looks like I don't have anything that I can use in my batch now if I had something that I could use uh, inside my library to fit that on it would pop up there so I'm actually going to Try that again. Just make clear that. Oops. Uh, yes, I do. And I'm going to say, yeah, I'm just going to fit a couple of these guys on there. Eventually. There we go. Okay, yep. So now I can see it's saying, well, you've got the scrap management, you've got a scrap sheet in there that you can use to pretty much put these parts on. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and say yes to use that scrap sheet. I'm gonna go into my scrap views and you can see it's automatically now using that sheet. Now it also comes with a nice little code and it also tells you the storage location of where it's set. Now this information also does appear 
on your labels. So your labels will have information on your, what the scrap size and what the scrap, um, scrap code is. So if I jump to my labels, over here, I'm going to open that, that scrap one. Okay, I've got my standard parts and I'm just going to scroll down to, yep. We can see, yep, there's my ID. There's where it needs to go. And there's the size of my sheet. That's going to be pretty much saved in the storeroom, ready for later use. So the next thing that we have that we can use for scrap management is we also have something called destroy O file. So destroy O file is what you would use if you want to sort of destroy any part of the sheet that's not going to be used for any any part it's not going to be used for scrap it's not going to be used for for anything it's just little teeny tiny bits of offcut that's pretty much useless to you um you the sheet is most likely if you didn't have this would take the part off break it and throw it in a bin and this guy here sort of makes it a bit easier for him to sort of get rid of all that rubbish on the sheet um so I've already got it set to 50 and 50. So this is the, sort of the width and the length of how the cutter is going to go and destroy your offcut. So again, I'll show you how this guy works. And I'm just going to go. Oh. Process everything again. Once I select the processing station. And I'm not going to commit any to inventory at the moment. And I'm going to, that's my off file. And show you what it looks like. So you see there, there's all my, all my routes here. That's pretty much saying that, yep, this is all useless. Now the reason I've got such a big block here is because I also didn't assign anything to scrap. So I didn't make any parts to generate my scrap sheets. But pretty much anything that would be useless would then be destroyed using a router bit. So there's that 50 by 50 dimensions that I set my off file. So that's why they're further apart. Now, if I wanted to sort of make these a bit closer, so it pretty much turns it completely to sawdust, I'll just go back into my scrap tab and I'll just pretty much set that to, I'll set that to the width of my router bit, which is about nine and a half mil. Now the sheet trims is pretty much how far off the sh nested sheet you wanna you wanna go. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna drop the sheet by about five mil as well. Just make sure it destroys pretty much everything as well. Uh, just the dust process. And yeah, might as well sign that to C doodle. Sign that to there. my dust off now and I can see here it's it's thickened a lot more and it's definitely going through and it's pretty much going to turn everything to, to dust and it's going to be sucked up by the vacuum so if you've got someone that's struggles with sort of breaking the parts on the skip of the bin um, you can just pretty much have this set so the machine will just destroy it for you just send it to the saw dust go straight into the bags and gets rid of it then and there and all of this is pretty much automated yep there's my little nested sheet still using my offcut and again this is all automated there's not too much um this is there's, there's pretty much plain and simple there's not much too much else that really complicates things you can obviously change what tool you want to use uh generally for this i'd recommend a 900 tool just because you don't want to wear out your your tool too much destroying all your off file you can also change your type so you can see here you can go in between the little uh, your little shadow line grooves, or you can have it so it doesn't. You don't want it to get, get rid of there. If those are small enough to be destroyed or it's thrown out, you don't have to get into there. You can also set the sequence to have it destroyed before or after you wrap all your parts as well, depending on the suction on your machine. So you can have all three of these guys ticked in, and this will pretty much optimize your, your scrap and your scrap storage. Now, there is one more thing I'd like to mention is that 
some of you may not be able to see this feature on your marker bowl. Uh, this is an additional module. Um, so if you do see this and it does look interesting, you think, yep, this is gonna definitely help with my management. This is definitely gonna help with my offcuts. Um, best person to speak to would be your account manager. Um, they'll give you, you know, a very comprehensive demo on how it works. They'll explain any questions you have um, and they'll be able to help you with all of that. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's all I've got. Yeah, I think I'll hand it over yeah. to Clay. Thanks a lot, Ludwig, for joining us there in Australia. So that will do it for today. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully you've learned something new, something to help you to continue to streamline the way you work. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and we will catch you again in our next Microfilm Live session. <laughs>